good afternoon everyone okay so yesterday we were into the discussion related to gst introduction to gst and what we have seen is how gst is formed and what are the various uh, types of gst the model of gst and then we have seen uh, what are the goods which are covered under the ambit of gst etc and now we are moving on to the next concept that is system of credit in indirect taxes so what is this uh, input tax credit there is a concept called as input tax credit that's what we are going to see now so input tax credit so we need to first understand so what is this input tax credit about so just one second say there is one trader okay so that particular trader is having some uh, purchases and sales so there is a trader and this trader is making some purchases and the value of that purchases is 1 lakh plus 12000 this 12000 is gst okay then so this trader whenever he makes purchases using that purchase he need to make sales na so he is making some sales and the value of that sales is 1 lakh 50000 plus 18000 this 18000 is gst on sales now so whatever is the gst paid on purchases how much ever gst that is paid on purchases called as input tax so this gst this 12000 is what tax on inputs so it is the name of it input tax okay so this 12000 is called as input tax then what is this 18000 called as tax on output correct so therefore this 18000 will be called as output tax output tax now so purchases i will call with a different name inward supplies because purchase is a term used in relation to goods but not only goods service also we are acquiring now we are procuring now so therefore this purchases is a generic term let's change this purchases to inward supplies so a trader is making some invert supplies invert supplies means what purchase of goods or services is known as invert supplies same way sales so this sales i will call with a different name that is outward supplies outward supplies means what sub sale of goods or services okay now now what happens here is that this 12000 rupees can be set off against that 18000 rupees so input tax can be set off against input tax can be set off against the output tax so the net gst payable the net gst payable will be 6000 rupees how 6000 18000 minus 12000 that 6000 is the net gst payable so how to arrive at the net gst payable simple here output tax minus output tax minus input tax is known as net gst payable understood the clarity yes understood you got the clarity about this so net gst payable is what output tax minus input tax what is output tax tax on outward supply what is input tax tax on inward supplies now why is it called as credit because this input tax is like a asset which we set off against our liability so is this 12000 real money no it's a virtual money this 12000 is a virtual money what we are going to do with this 12000 we are going to set off with our 18000 liability so the net amount we are going to pay so this is like input tax receivable a credit okay it's a benefit which we are deriving so this input tax credit is nothing but tax paid on invert supply so what is the full form of input tax credit input tax credit means what tax 
paid on invert supplies. So what tax is paid on invert supply? GST. GST paid on invert supplies is known as input tax credit. Up to this you understood? Now what we are going to do with that input tax credit? First what is input tax credit? GST paid on invert supply. What we are going to do with that input tax credit? We are going to set off with the GST payable on outward supply, correct? So that is what it is. So GST paid on invert supplies can be set off against the GST payable on outward supplies. Got it? So now, so that is about this concept of input tax credit and let us try to understand this with the help of some journal entries so that you will get an idea as to how the process happens. Can you tell me the entry for purchases? What is the entry for purchases? Purchase entry. In this case, purchase account debit how much? 1 lakh or 1 lakh 12,000? 1 lakh. Why not 1 lakh 12,000? The 12,000 is recoverable. Recoverable. So it will not be added to the cost. Are you understanding? So that is what our AS2 says. Accounting standard 2 valuation of inventories says that any recoverable taxes and duties will not be added to the cost. Same way, even our fixed asset is there now, accounting standards for fixed assets. Which one? AS10. So what does AS10 say? Same. So even while doing the valuation of the asset, so we should not be recognizing into the cost of the asset, the recoverable taxes. So this is a recoverable tax. Tax we are paying, but it is recoverable in nature. Due to that reason, it should not be added to cost. So what will be taken as purchases? Purchases account debit. How much is the purchase account debit? 1 lakh. Okay. Then this 12,000 is what? ITC. This 12,000 is tax on invert supply. What is the tax on invert supply called as? ITC, input tax credit. Okay. So is it a receivable or payable? That 12,000 is a benefit, benefit, asset. Asset shows what balance, debit balance, credit balance. It is like an asset. Pa. Asset shows what balance, debit balance. So, ITC account debit. How much is ITC account debit? 12,000. Two. Two what? Either bank or creditor. To bank or creditor, how much? 1 lakh 12,000. Understood this purchase entry? Now, sales entry, tell me, try. What is the entry for sales in this case? How much we are getting? 1 lakh 68 we receive. So, either bank account debit, bank account, or debtor account. Correct. Bank account or debtor account debit. How much? 1 lakh. 68,002 sales. How much is sales? 1 lakh 50. So, why can't we recognize 1 lakh 68 as sales? Because at 18,000, we have to pay to government. It is a liability that cannot be added to our revenue. Correct. So, therefore, to sales will be 1 lakh 50,000 and to GST payable liability. Liability shows what balance? credit balance. So, to GST payable 18,000. Understood up to this? Now, what is the entry for set off? Now, see, listen carefully. I have a liability which is 18,000. Now, I need to cancel. Liability shows what balance? Credit balance. If I need to cancel, what should I do? Debit. So, GST payable account debit. How much? 18,000. Huh? This 18,000 fully I do not have to pay. I have an asset. What is the name of the asset? ITC. So, can I use the asset? Asset shows what balance? Debit balance. If I need to cancel? Credit. So, to ITC account, how much? 12,000. Okay. Now, what is the difference? 6,000 that I have to pay na, to government. So, to bank to bank account 6000 now understood here input tax credit clear so what is input tax credit sir gst paid on 
inward supply that can be availed as credit. Availed is a legal term. Taking credit is generic term, but legally we call it as availment of credit. Availment means what? Taking credit. Okay. And what we are going to do with that? Set off against GST payable on outward supply. This set off again is a generic word. So, we need to call it as utilized for payment of GST on outward supplies. Okay. So, come on tell again what is input tax credit? What is the concept of input tax credit? You write and tell. You write and tell parallelly. So, first you tell what is input tax credit? Concept of input tax credit? GST paid on inward supply. Uh, what we can do with that? Availed as ITC, availed as credit uh, and utilized for payment of GST on outward supplies. So, give a side rating concept of input tax credit. Concept of input tax credit. Even though it is there in the notebook, but I am making you write because it is a very important area, that is why. Concept of input tax credit. Concept of input tax credit. Input tax credit in short form is ITC. ITC. So, what is it? First, GST paid on inward supplies. GST paid on inward supplies. GST paid on inward supplies can be availed as GST paid on inward supplies can be availed A V A I L E D availed as input tax credit GST paid on inward supplies can be availed as input tax credit and utilized and utilized for payment of and utilized for payment of GST on what? Outward supplies. Utilized for payment of GST on outward supplies. Okay. Now, below that you write down availment of ITZ. Availment of ITZ. Availment of ITZ equal to what is the meaning of availment of ITZ? Taking credit. Taking credit. Availment of ITZ equal to taking credit. Okay. Now, sir, where we will take credit, sir? Credit we will take. Where we need to take the credit, sir? There is a return called as GSTR 3B. This is a return which is required to be filed by every registered person. Every registered person under GST is required to file a written. What is the name of that written? Written means one statement we need to file. With whom we need to file? With the government. And that format is known as GSTR 3B. GST written. GSTR means GST written 3B written. So, I will show you how that 3B written will be. So, that you will understand. You know, see. We will also look into the practical side, but that is not for exam. Whatever I am going to discuss practically is not for exam, but after your exam, when you go for articleship and all, this will definitely help you. So, that is why we are learning practically also. So, here if you see in this returns GSTR 3B. So, The moment we go to the dashboard, the dashboard, the portal, the GST portal is called as gst.gov.in. That is the place where the communication or the interaction is there with the government, between government and the taxpayer. What is the information technology medium? GST portal. That GST portal is hosted in gst.gov.in. That is a website. So, in this, once you log in, and go to services, returns and return dashboard. You will be able to see this return dashboard GSTR 3B. 
can you see this gstr 3b like that and in that gstr 3b once you click on prepare online so you will be able to see this total five boxes okay in this five boxes the first box is tax on outward supplies so just now we discussed na what is that output tax whatever is the tax on outward supplies we need to mention there and then third second box is interstate supplies interstate supply means what that also yesterday we discussed if the location of supplier and the place of supply is in two different states or two different union territories or a state and a union territory it is interstate supply so interstate supply we have igst liability so that we need to show second then eligible itz whatever is the input tax credit that we are availing that we need to show here so we need to show this under eligible itz so we are going to table 4 what is a table 4 eligible itz so the moment you click on table 4 you will be able to see one statement like this here how much ever input tax credit that you have what is input tax credit tax paid on purchases so in a month you will have lot of purchases huh? correct if you are doing business there are lot of purchases you take any person here you take a trader you take a manufacturer you take a service provider everyone will have purchases correct so now those purchases how much ever gst we paid on that purchases that we need to mention here how much is the tax paid on inward supplies and the moment you click on confirm that is called as availment of itc now you understood so where we will avail itc gstr 3b so availment of itc equals to what taking credit where you take credit where you take credit in gstr 3b right taking credit in gstr 3b what is gstr 3b it is a return correct ah gstr 3b is a return which we file with the government so there we take the itc that is called as availment of itc okay next next line utilization of itc utilization of itc so what is the meaning of utilization of itc once you took the credit you need to set off with our liability in the same gstr 3b in table 1 we showed the liability how much we need to pay in table 4 we are showing the itc correct now we need to do the set off that also we will do here so once we have entered all the details so it will show as to how much is the payment that we need to make okay proceed for payment can you see here proceed for payment once you click on proceed for payment okay it will ask you to set off with the credit paid through itc can you see that this table paid through itc on the top you see how much ever gst it will show here 11 lakh 22000 this 11 lakh 22299 is there na that is liability that uh, 357 357 says uh, this and all is our liability how much liability we will pay through credit that paid through itc there we need to type this is known as set off utilization okay so where we do utilization same return in the same return gstr 3b we do the utilization so utilization of itc is what set off utilization of itc equals to set off set off of what itc against what liability where in 3b okay write down set off of set off of utilization of itc equals to set off of itc against liability set off of itc against liability in gstr 3b so both availment of itc also utilization of itc also both things will happen in gstr 3b okay so that is about this input tax credit and for example you make note of this below that for example like that you write and you make note of this so there is a trader who is having some inward supplies 
who is having some outward supplies and uh, on inward supplies there is some 1 lakh plus 12,000 GST. On outward supplies the trader will receive 1 lakh 50 plus 18,000 GST. And this 12,000 is called as input tax, that 18,000 is called as output tax. So literally whatever you are seeing, you just make note of it. So this today's class we will put it in YouTube okay so this 20 minutes you watch that and next class onwards please be on time everyone huh? because if you miss that 20 minutes 15 minutes then continuity will be difficult for you that's why. Then, so there are three entries that you need to write. Hope you finish this chart. Then these three entries, journal entries you write. One is purchase entry, another is sales entry and last one is that utilization, set off entry. So, whenever a person is purchasing, so trader is purchasing here 1 lakh 12,000. So, 1 lakh will be purchases, ITC 12,000. So, total to bank or credit are depends, 1 lakh 12,000. So, we are recognizing asset. So, in financials, that is in balance sheet, we show this ITC as a current asset. We show this as a current asset. Okay. So, usually when you do the balance sheet, financials, the purchase will go to p and L. This ITC will go to the current asset. Okay. Same way here, the sales entry, bank account or debtor account debit 1,68. Then sales, sales will go to p and L. But this GST payable is our liability, outstanding liability. So, all outstanding liabilities will be shown where as a current liability. So, it will be like current liability current liability and this will get set off current asset we will set off with the current liability so that is the next entry and uh, therefore there is a cash outflow the 6000 is literally cash outflow cash outflow okay and you can also understand it in a simple logic. Now I am the trader. You are my customer. How much you gave me as tax? 18,000. Now this 18,000 already at the time of purchase, I have spent 12,000 for tax. 
that I am recovering. I have 18,000 pa. In this 18,000, already at the time of purchase, I have spent 12,000 that I am recovering. What is left? That is not mine. So, I am giving it to government. That is an NGST payable. You understood. So, input tax credit is in a way recovery of my investment. At the time of purchase, I spent now that I am recovering now. And the remaining amount is not mine that I will pay to the government. Okay. That is what net GST payable. Gross is what I collected from you. 18. Minus input tax. What I have already paid at the time of purchase. So, the net amount will be 6000 which I am paying it to the government. What if this input tax credit is not there? So, that we will see now. How much is the profit of this trader? In this situation, what is the profit of the trader? 18,000 we got, 12,000 we recovered, 6,000 we paid to government. So, the tax portion done, job done. So, now 1,50,000 we got. Already at the time of purchase, we spent 1 lakh. 12,000 we recovered now. Up to 12,000, we should not be adding it to the cost. Are you getting this? So, only 1 lakh is our cost. So, 1,50,000 minus 1 lakh, what is left? 50,000. That 50,000 is our profit. Suppose, if this 12,000 is not available as ITC, then what we will do? We will add it to our cost. Then the purchase will become 1 lakh 12,000 and profit, no one will try to reduce their profit. Correct. Yes or no? See, business means we fix a profit and we will be willing to get the maximum profit what we can. So, without profit, no one will do the business. Exactly. So, we are not doing charity, na? Everyone is doing business for the sake of profit. So, that 50,000 we will keep. Then what happens to the sale price? It is not 1,50,000. It will be 1,12,000 plus 50,000. So, the sale price is going to increase. When the sale price increases, the tax on sales also will increase. So, which means it is going to affect the consumer. You got it. So, the disadvantage of not having input tax credit, not having input tax credit is what? The cost of the product will increase. So, the advantage is what because of input tax credit, the sale price gets reduced because the trader or the person will not try to recover that GST from the next person, the purchases GST also. Okay. Then, now this is the concept of input tax credit. You can see this information in page number 11 in your note, in your textbook. In your textbook, you can see page number 11. So, see the first point. Indirect tax is levied on every transaction. The originator of the transaction shall pay indirect tax to government and recover it from the recipient of the transaction. Now, indirect tax paid at an earlier stage is available for set off against indirect tax payable at a later stage. Am I right? And this indirect tax paid at an earlier stage is known as credit. And what will happen if there is excess credit? Why will there be excess credit? Why will there be excess credit? I have lot of purchases, but less sales. Possible? I purchase 10,000 units. Pa. Is there a guarantee that all 10,000 units I will sell in the same month? No. I may sell less also. So, therefore, my purchases is more, but my sales is less. Now, in this case, my liability is less, but the credit I have is more. For example, 10,000 units I am purchasing, 2,000 only I am selling. Now, for 10,000 units, whatever tax I have paid is input tax credit. Now, for 2,000 units, whatever is the liability is there. So, I can use this input tax credit for payment of liability. Still, I have some excess credit. What I can do with that excess credit? Carry forward it to the next month and set off against the liability of the next month. Understood? And like that for how many months or how many years I can carry forward? Is there any time limit? No. It is not set off and carry forward. Eight years, the loss can be carried forward in income tax. But here we don't have any time limit. You carry forward for indefinite period till the time your business is in existence and set off against your liability in future. Even when you transfer the business, the ITC can be transferred because ITC is a current asset. In accounting, amalgamation you would have studied wherein when assets are transferred, current asset also will be transferred. Na. 
So, ITC is also current asset. So, when you transfer the business, ITC also will be transferred. Are you understanding? So, that is the advantage of this input tax credit. But if the business is shut down, if we liquidate the business, if we shut down the business, then ITC is gone, lapsed. There you cannot say, go, go to the government and say, I have some money, give me my money like that and all, you cannot say. So, if you are having business, you can set off with your liability. If you transfer the business, ITC can be transferred. If you shut down the business, ITC is gone. You got it? And what if there is a shortfall? Shortfall when it arises, my sales is huge, but I don't have that much of input tax credit. Okay, my business has more value addition. I purchase for 1 lakh, but I am selling for 2 lakh 50. So, definitely my liability is more than my credit. So, in that case, the difference amount I have to pay by cash. So, see the last point. If there is any excess credit, it shall be carried forward to set off with the liability arising out of next transaction. And if there is any deficit, the balance liability of indirect tax shall be payable. Now, now we will see one illustration on the system of credit. There are three dealers. Pa dealer A, B and C in the value chain of supply of goods and assume the tax rate as 10 percent in each case and the value addition made by A is 100 from 0 A is selling for 100 rupees and B is adding a margin of 50 for that 100 then again C is adding a margin of 30 because in the supply chain everyone will try to add profit now from the manufacturer stage to retailer stage, everyone will be adding profit and they will be selling. So, determine the total cost on consumer D if there is no credit system and if there is credit system. First, we will see if there is no credit system. If there is no credit system, what will happen? Price will increase like that I said. Now, nah, let us see that. First, dealer A. So, step into the shoes of dealer A. You are dealer A. What is your purchase price? Zero. Because you are the first person in the transaction, like you are a manufacturer. So, you do not have any purchases. You are only making the product from the natural resources. Okay. So, now purchase price zero. How much is your sale price? 100. What is the tax on sales? 10. So, how much you will recover from dealer B? 110. Over a... Now, step into the shoes of dealer B. Now, you are dealer B. How much you paid on purchase? 110. 110. In that 110, can you take any credit? No. Which means what is your cost? 110. Entire 110 rupees is your cost. Understood. Entire 110 rupees will become your cost. And then, so what is the value addition that you are making? 50. So, therefore, 110 plus 50. How much? 160. Now, on that 160, you need to pay tax. How much? 10 percent, 16 rupees. So, how much you will recover from dealer C? 176. Are you with me? 176 you will recover. How much you will pay to government? 16. Entire 16 you will pay. Why? You do not have input tax credit now. So, entire 16 you will pay to government. Then again, step into the shoes of dealer C. Now, you are dealer C. How much you paid on purchase? 176 you paid on purchase. Correct. Then, what is the value addition that you are making as a dealer C? 30. 176 plus 30. 206 on the 206 10 percent you will pay as tax so how much 10 percent of 206 20.6 you will pay so total how much you will recover from the consumer 226.6 already 206 plus 20.6 so 226.6 you will recover from the consumer so what is the cost to the consumer huh, 226 consumer consumer 226.6. How much dealer A has paid tax to government? 10. Just check the table. How much dealer A has paid tax to government? 10. Dealer B paid how much? 16. Dealer C paid how much? 20.4. What is the revenue to the government? Uh, 20.6. What is the revenue to the government? 46.6. Are you understanding this? So, amount collected from the consumer is 226.6. And out of that amount is, tax amount is 20.6, but total tax payable to government is 46.6. What is happening here? Are you observing? Already 100 rupees got taxed. 
again dealer b is also taxing on the same 100 correct uh, dealer b logically should tax what 50 rupees but dealer b what he is doing he is taxing 100 which already got taxed again entered into the chain again it is getting taxed am i right then again dealer c is also taxing on that so this is known as cascading effect of tax tax on tax plus same amount tax twice okay now if you see dealer b how much value addition is made by dealer b 50 and how much is the tax rate 10 percent means how much you should pay to government 5 but how much he is paying 16 how he is paying 16 rupees that 100 rupees which was already taxed again he is also paying correct huh? so that 100 into 10 percent is 10 plus the 10 rupees is the tax which is already paid to dealer a am i right the 10 rupees also is now coming into the value so 10 into 10 10 rupees into 10 percent is what 1 rupee now you understood how we got 16 100 rupees taxed again pa so 100 into 10 percent is 10 rupees then the 10 rupees is taxed again tax on tax so 1 rupee plus anyhow value addition 50 rupees he need to pay tax 5 so the 10 plus 1 plus 5 16 rupees instead of paying 5 rupees he is unnecessarily paying 16 rupees so who is getting benefit government so in the entire process who is sufferer consumer and who is getting the benefit government is getting the benefit you understood now what is the value of the product 180 rupees how 180 100 plus 50 plus 30 180 rupees for 180 rupees product how much we are paying as tax to government 46.6 see the effective rate of tax 46.6 divided by 180 you do the calculation 46.6 divided by 180 46.6 divided by 180 into 100 rate itself is 10 percent but see how much effectively we are paying 25 point something now what you will think as a trader why should we pay correct so consumer will ask sir why should i pay this much 180 rupees product why should i pay 226.6 correct logical how why should i pay 46.6 so you will ask the retailer give me product without bill you understood correct everyone will ask but you are also a consumer when you go to a shop with bill 226.6 without bill 180 which you need without bill why i need bill so why should i pay tax correct all the philosophy and all we will remember that only if i pay tax uh, what is the benefit for me so some politicians are going to earn uh, correct or not so what is the benefit for me like that we will think and we will make without transaction without transaction means black money yeah correct we are only the cause of black money now what retailer will tell boss i did not give bill to my customer so he will tell to wholesaler i don't need bill you give me without bill wholesaler will tell to manufacturer also i don't need bill you give me without bill so the product means the entire supply chain has escaped now the black money got created you understood i am not telling today black money is not there today also it is there it was there black money is like uh, black magic you know it, you cannot erase it or you cannot eradicate it it is something which will always be there till the time taxation is there in a country and that taxation is going to be at a higher percentage no one will be willing to pay the taxes okay so in a way i like singapore in that in singapore everyone will pay tax you know complain voluntarily they will come and comply with tax you know what is the reason behind it because the tax rate is very small maximum six percent seven percent is the gst rate now six percent seven percent means you will you don't mind not paying it 18 percent means it will pinch three times six percent eighteen percent three times if it is six percent ha okay six percent only na if it is two percent three percent voluntarily will tell you tell me so if income tax is coming down to five percent challenge 
30 percent to 40 percent of the population will pay income tax if the income tax is 30 percent people will not pay if you bring down the income tax to 3 percent 4 percent definitely they are, they are all very good people so we do lot of donations correct or not 3 percent 4 percent we will put for beggar also pa that 3 percent 100 rupees you are earning means 3 rupees will pinch you ah huh? will not it will you will do that that is the development of economy so therefore the problem that we have in india is actually what you know taxes if taxes is high people will not be interested to pay the tax when people are not interested to pay tax they will hide their income when they are hiding their income that is black money so all this black money we need to spend so when we are spending also there is no account for that this is where government has thought and they brought in the credit system because the moment credit system comes there will be a fair tax policy how much is the tax rate upon the value that much only will get charged how will that work sir see the next table so now we are looking into if there is a credit system if there is a credit system so dealer a no change in dealer a why no change in dealer a anyhow dealer a is not making any purchases now so purchase of dealer a will be zero sale price will be 100 gst will be 10 so how much dealer a will collect from dealer b 110 no change up now dealer b dealer b you are dealer b how much you paid on purchase 110 in that 110 can you take 10 rupees as credit this is with credit system this with credit system can you take the 10 rupees as credit yes so what is your cost 100 now what is the profit that you are expecting as dealer b 50 so 100 plus 150 how much you will fix as price 150 on 150 what is the tax that you will collect from dealer c 15 got it so how much you are going to collect from dealer c 165 but same way before how much we were collecting 176 are you understanding the price has come down now you are collecting 165 be careful 165 in that 165 15 rupees is taxed already you paid at the time of purchase 10 rupees that you recover what is the balance amount left with you 5 that you will give to government you got it so tax paid to government by dealer b will be 5 rupees then how much you recovered from dealer c 165 now you are dealer c now you are dealer c dealer c what is the purchase price 150 why 150 because that 15 rupees can be taken as credit and 150 how much value addition you are making as dealer c 30 rupees so 150 plus 30 how much 180 180 into what is the rate of gst 10 percent so that is 18 rupees so 18 rupees is your liability that you recover from the consumer so what is the amount that you are recovering from the consumer 180 plus 18 that is 198 got it in that 18 rupees also full 18 rupees you will not pay to government because already at the time of purchase you have paid 15 that you will recover so 18 minus 15 will be 3 rupees that 3 rupees only you will give it to the government got it now what is the consumer cost cost to consumer 198 previous previous how much is the cost to the consumer 226.6 it saved up correct or not how much is the saving 226.6 minus 198 how much 28.6 okay you keep it one side now previously what was the revenue to government 46.6 and how much is the revenue to the government now 18 how much government lost you understood government is losing its revenue in turn it got compensated to the consumer that's why they brought in the credit system are you understanding but in gst we have got the credit system so then gst is good only now you understood sir previously gst credit system was not there gst was not there so credit system was not there and now in gst they brought in the credit system wherein lot of purchases you can take itc only few purchases you cannot take itc that is called as blocked credit so remaining and all you can take itc then gst is a good system only now then why people complain about gst whatever we have seen is the expectation now, usually we see lot of uh, memes now expectation versus reality so far what i have said is expectation 
let's see the reality what has happened now dealer b thought anyhow dealer c was ready to pay me 176 correct anyhow dealer b c was ready to pay me 176 rupees previously now why should i sell the product less because there is a market mentality today that if you reduce the price of the product, people think that we are inferior. We are not giving better quality. See, if you keep the price as same, no problem. But all of a sudden, if you reduce the price, no, people will think that you are not giving the quality. It does not mean lesser price means lesser quality. It's not that. You are charging like this, pa. Suddenly, when you reduce, customer will think that you are not giving better quality product. Usually, it is there or not. Psychology is there or not. Say, actually, you know, what is the cost of Pepsi and Coke? Pepsi and Coke cost how much, you know? Cost, cost. One uh, bottle you consume, na? 300 ml. How much is 300 ml price? 20 rupees. 25 rupees like that, correct? You know what is the cost of that 300 ml bottle? 1 rupee. 1 rupee. 1 rupee is the cost. Suppose if they are selling for 1 and a half rupee, what you will think? Rear, this is something else. We should not consume like that, correct? Ah? But actually its cost is 1 rupee. What is it? Nothing but drainage water. Normal water will be there. In that water, they put some essence eh? and that essence is a concentrate. No one will know what is that concentrate. It's a formula. So, that actually you can clean toilets superbly using Pepsi and Coke. I tried. Toilet and all usually when we go, there will be lot of stains in the toilet. Harpy and all is not working properly. I buy Coke, 300 ml bottle and if I pour it and half an hour after if you brush no fully, it will wipe off. Super, like white. No, really air I am not lying. So, next time also in your bathroom, toilet and all, you try this Coke and Pepsi, superbly it will work out, okay. So, it is such kind of, you know, harpic we are drinking and 1 rupee, freely if they give also, you should not drink. But we are paying 30 rupees, 40 rupees for that and we are purchasing. Suppose if it is 1 and a half rupee, everyone will get it out, na? That's why, one price they have fixed. So, this is the market mentality that people will not accept if the price has come down. So, dealer B thought, anyhow the, my customer was ready to pay me 176, why should I sell it at 165? Because he will think that I am not selling a proper product. So, dealer B retained the same amount, 176. So, 176 he retained even though he gets a credit. So, but what is his cost of purchase? 100. Because credit is available, his cost of purchase is only 100. So, but he is collecting 176, inclusive of tax. Now, inclusive of tax, how to calculate tax? If 176 is inclusive of 10 percent, how to calculate the tax amount? Into 10 by 110, you understood? Loading and all, somewhere in foundation, consignment chapter you would have studied, na? So, there is 176 rupees including 10 percent GST. Are you getting this? So, how will you calculate GST amount? 176 into 10 by 110, please do the calculation. 176 into 10 by 110, 16. Now, 176 minus 16. So, how much you got as money now in your hand? 160. But what is your cost? 100. So, how much is your profit now? 60. What was your profit before? 50. Now, your profit has increased. Why your profit has increased? By 10 rupees. Because you collected the same amount from the customer, your customer, dealer C, you got it? Now, what dealer C is thinking, anyhow my consumer is ready to pay 226.6, why should I reduce? So, therefore, dealer C also fix the price as 226.6 and calculate GST 226.6 into 10 by 110. 20 point 6. So, 20.6 if you take out, how much is left with dealer C? 206. And what is the cost to dealer C? See, 
he paid 176 but in that 176 16 rupees he can take as credit so his cost is only 160 so 160 and 206 how much is the profit that he has made 46 previously what was his profit only 30 rupees now he made a profit why he could make a profit because he is fixing the same price this is the reality because of credit not being passed on to the customer what happened their profit has increased understood okay sir whether revenue to the government has increased no check the revenue to the government so dealer a pay 10 rupees huh? dealer pay, pay dealer b pays how much 6 rupees dealer c is paying how much 4.6 so the revenue to the government is only 20.6 correct 20.6 so government also not getting great money but who is getting profit here who is getting the benefit here the dealers the dealers are making the profit so previously their profit was 150 and 30 now their profit increased to 160 and 46 this is known as profiteering what is profiteering not passing on the benefit of ITC to the consumer by reducing the price is known as profiteering so you are retaining the same price when you retain the same price automatically your profit will increase this is known as profiteering so whenever you try to do profiteering so then the best the benefit is not passed on so the consumer will not see any price difference this is what reality it has happened so no one thought that you know GST the price will be the same but reality the price became the same everyone thought the prices should reduce but the price became the same and to take action against these dealers they created one authority called as anti-profiteering authority but that anti-profiteering authority has not done its job properly okay so that's why we could not see great benefit in GST it is like good concept but implementation failure like that so in order to avoid this scenario government has introduced anti-profiteering provisions understood now so you you got the clarity about input tax credit can I move on yes now so what is input tax credit GST paid on invert supplies now what are the various types of GSTs that we have CGST uh, SGST UTGST IGST now say this I have some invert supplies no need to make note just listen I have some invert supplies on this invert supplies I have CGST credit then SGST credit, UTGST credit and IGST credit ok. So I have got some invert supplies on my invert supplies I have got CGST credit, SGST credit, UTGST credit and IGST credit same way on my outward supplies on my outward supplies I have some liability CGST payable possible I will have intrastate as well as interstate purchase as well as sales will you agree so purchase also within the state outside the state sales also within the state outside the state so I will have multiple liabilities CGST payable SGST payable then UTGST payable and IGST payable so I have all the liabilities now can I use CGST credit for payment of CGST liability can I use CGST credit for payment of CGST liability yes I can use CGST credit for payment of CGST liability no issue but I cannot use CGST credit for payment of SGST liability why CGST credit means that tax is with central government but SGST payable is to the state government so they are not allowing the set off same way CGST credit cannot be set off against UTGST payable but CGST credit I can use for payment of IGST because IGST anyhow I have to pay to central government only same way SGST credit SGST credit cannot be used for a CGST payable but it can be used for SGST payable 
cannot be used for UTGST payable but can be used for IGST payable. Same way UTGST credit cannot be used for CGST payable and SGST payable but can be used for payment of UTGST and IGST. But IGST credit is not like that. IGST credit can be utilized for payment of all the liabilities. CGST, SGST, UTGST and IGST for all the liabilities IGST credit can be utilized. Now from this table how can we remember it easily say this with respect to IGST credit there is no issue will you agree with me with respect to IGST credit there is no issue correct which means IGST credit can be utilized for payment of any GST liability and any GST credit can be utilized for payment of IGST liability correct IGST credit we can use for payment of any liability same way any credit can be utilized for payment of IGST liability so there is no restriction with respect to IGST but with respect to other three you see CGST credit only for CGST liability SGST for SGST liability and UTGST only for UTGST am I right so these are the two points that you need to remember what is that there is no restriction with respect to IGST means what IGST credit can be utilized for payment of any GST liability okay and any GST credit can be utilized for payment of IGST liability but between other three CGST, SGST and UTGST respective credit for payment of respective liabilities okay now I will try to make it little simple IGST then CGST, then SGST or UTGST, okay. Now, what is your name, Pa? Vignesh. So, Mr. Vignesh is IGST, okay. And Mrs. Vignesh is CGST, Vignesh wife. SGST and UTGST is parents of Mr. Vignesh. Okay. Now, Vignesh will adjust with his parents and Vignesh will adjust with his wife. Okay. Whereas, his wife will not adjust with his parents. You understood? Clear? This is the reality of every family. So, husband has to adjust with wife. Husband has to adjust with parents. Same is the case parents will adjust with uh, son and wife will adjust with uh, her husband. But in-laws, no. So, daughter-in-law will never adjust with the father-in-law father and mother-in-law. So, that is the reality. So, CGST credit cannot be adjusted with SGST or UTGST credit liability. Same way SGST, UTGST credit cannot be adjusted with CGST liability. However, IGST is like neutral. Husband in every family who need to adjust with wife also, his parents also. You understood? So, this is about the two points or first principle that you need to remember. So, you can see this. So, what we are discussing now is manner of utilization of credit. This manner of utilization of credit is given in section 49 and 49A of CGST Act and from this table, so the first principle that you need to remember. So, I have given there below in page 13 you see that what is that? There is no restriction with respect to IGST means what? Any GST credit can be utilized for payment of IGST liability and IGST credit can be utilized for payment of any GST liability. With respect to other credits, respective credit can be utilized for payment of respective liability and cross utilization is not allowed. Understood? Then next, next principle, you see this, you see this. Now I have IGST credit. I can use it for payment of all liabilities now. But which one I should use first? IGST. 
So, IGST credit should be used first for payment of IGST liability. Thereafter, between CGST, SGST and UTGST in any manner, any proportion, you got it, any manner, that is not at all an issue. That is, Vignesh should first meet his own expenses, correct. Then only he should think about his wife and parents. Will you agree with me? Yes or no? And when he is comparing between wife and parents, how he should compare? Priority he should give? Ah, no. Equal. So, in any manner, any proportion. So, there is no priority there. First for me. Then only for others. You got it? So, IGST credit should be first for IGST liability. Thereafter, CGST, SGST or UTGST in any manner, any proportion. Now, CGST credit, same is the case, everyone will be, correct. Everyone is selfish only. First, they will think about them only, na. So, CGST credit, uh, first for CGST liability, then only for IGST liability. So, Vignesh wife will bother about her only first, then only Vignesh. You understood or not? So, why like that? That is how the reality is, okay. So, I am not only teaching you GST, but I am also teaching you, you know, there are many things in life after CA which you will be facing. So, this will give an experience for you. Now, SGST credit, UTGST credit, of course. So, first for payment of their liability, then only for payment of IGST. You got it? Then. So, this is the second principle. Look into the second principle, priority. What is the priority? IGST credit first for payment of IGST, then for CGST, SGST or UTGST, any manner, any proportion. But other three CGST, SGST and UTGST first for its liability, then for payment of IGST. Then third principle, say this, before utilizing CGST and SGST credit, the credit of IGST should be completely exhausted. You got it? So, what does it mean? Before utilizing CGST and SGST credit, completely the IGST credit needs to be exhausted. That is also correct because, you know, my wife will not take one rupee also from her wallet. She will always take money from my wallet only first. If my wallet do not have anything, uh, that is why I will not carry it really, you know. See, nothing is there in my wallet, just wallet is there. One rupee also I will not keep. Everything will be GPay card only, okay. So, because uh, milk bill uh, or water can bill, uh, every bill will be taken from my wallet only. And whenever I will be in need, uh, there won't be cash available, okay. This is what everyone will do. So, therefore, first IGST credit should complete. No, we should spend then only CGST or SGST or UTGST credit. You got it? So, first which credit should be exhausted? IGST credit. Okay, sir, for remembering, nice. But what, why, why they have given like that? Because basically IGST credit is like a suspense. Why it is like a suspense? Fully it will not be retained by central government. Na. They have to share 50% with the state government. That is why they are asking you spend it first. IGST credit you utilize first. And then we will see whatever is left over, etc. Okay. Then, so what are the three principles? Can you tell me? First principle, this is very, very important area. Pa, okay. So, mark it as important. That manner of utilization of credit, section 49 and 49A. So, that heading is very, very important. Whatever concept that we are discussing now, manner of utilization of credit, this is very important area. So, I told you now the first question which is actually a consolidated question, 10 marks question. In the 10 marks question, definitely we will do this adjustment, okay. So, what is the first principle, come on. Two points, two points in first principle. Ah, do not see book, without seeing book try. No restriction with respect to IGST, means IGST credit can be utilized for payment of any liability and any credit can be placed for payment of IGST liability. Second point, with respect to CGST, SGST and UTGST, respective credit for payment of respective liability. 
Then second principle, order of utilization, first IGST credit, for what? Then CGST, SGST, UTGST, any manner, any proportion. Then other three, first for its liability, then for IGST. Next third principle, which credit we need to utilize first? IGST credit before touching CGST, SGST or UTGST credits. Then last principle, I have got lot of credits only one liability, IGST liability. I should use which credit first? IGST, okay. Then CGST, then SGST or UTGST, okay. Now, for example, I am badly in need of money. I have to buy something or I need to spend something. First, what I will do? I will check my pocket. Suppose if I don't have money, but I need to spend, what I will do? I will ask my wife. Before asking my parents, no, because donkey's age I got, na. okay, I have kids. Will I ask my parents first? No, I will ask my wife. And if that is also not sufficient, uh, then whom I will ask? My parents. Because they will have some money, some savings, I will ask them, correct. So, first IGST credit, then for payment of IGST liability, first IGST credit, then CGST credit, then SGST or UTGST credit. Understood or not? Clear? That is the fourth principle. So, for payment of IGST liability, credit should be utilized in the following order. First IGST credit, then CGST credit, then SGST or UTGST credit. Clear here? Now, what is the difference between second principle and the fourth principle? In second principle, I have only one credit, multiple liabilities, IGST credit, but many liabilities. Got it? There, IGST credit first, utilized for IGST, then CGST, SGST, UTGST, any manner, any proportion. But in fourth principle, it is reverse. I have one liability only, but multiple credits. You got it? So, first I am using IGST, then CGST, and then SGST or UTGST. Done? Yes? Super. So, this is about the four principles that you need to remember related to section 49, okay. So, can you please revise it once again so that we will move on to the illustrations, come on. Principle number one, tell, you want to read once, okay, quickly go through that once, we will move on to illustrations. Four principles are there now, just read it once. Then we will move on to the illustrations. Look into the first illustration. Compute net GST payable from the following data. Particulars CGST, SGST, IGST. We have GST payable on outward supply 20,000, 20,000 and 10,000. GST paid on inward supplies 25,000. So what is the credit that we have? IGST credit. What we should do? First we should use for payment of? IGST 10,000. Still how much is left? 15,000. So, what you can do with that 15,000? Anything. Either CGST fully or SGST fully or both CGST and SGST. So, which means multiple answers possible. Correct. Then will we get marks sir? Yes. How will they check whether our answer is correct or not? The final net liability. The final net liability should be how much? 
total all liabilities just total all liabilities 20 20 10 50 minus total ITC 25 so the tot final answer total should be 25 if that is there your answer is correct you got it so now write down answer to illustration 1 I asked you to give page numbers to your notebook huh? so that notebook page number you update here refer so and so number page number of your notebook in this illustrations so that it will be easy for you okay answer to illustration 1 So, first see this particulars, then we need to take CGST, SGST, UTGST we do not have only IGST, IGST and one column, total column also you take, so that you will convey the final answer and in particulars, how to calculate the net GST payable, first gross GST payable. Gross GST payable. Gross GST payable means what? GST payable on what? Outward supplies. Gross GST payable means GST on outward supplies. Output tax. Gross GST payable means this is nothing but output tax. Output tax. How much is that output tax? 50. Ah, 50. 40. No. 20, no, 20, 20, 10, correct, but we have to update in the columns, na? 20, 20, 10, the total is 50, minus, which credit we need to utilize? IGST credit, only one credit we have, IGST credit utilized. First we need to use it for what? IGST, 10,000 and you just mention it as 1, okay. Then anything, whichever you like you do, no issue. So either you can use 15,000 for CGST or SGST or you can use equally 7,500 for CGST, 7,500 for SGST because 15,000 you have now that you can do, 15 that is total 25,000. This is 2. Now, the balance what we get is known as net GST payable. Net GST payable will be so 20 minus 7500, 12500, 12500, 0, and here it will be 25000. Note alternative answers exist, but the total of net liability, but the total of net liability is twenty five thousand. Am I right? Next illustration. Hope you finish making note of this. Look into the next illustration, second illustration. Compute net GST payable from the following data. CGST, SGST, IGST, cross 20, 20, 10 and ITC 22,000, 22,000. What you should do? First CGST credit you have to use for uh, CGST. Then how much is left? Uh, uh, that we will use for IGST. Okay. It is a simple, simple question only. Just to, to know 
what is the way in which we need to arrive at the answer? I gave some small, small illustrations. So, answer to illustration 2. Same table, particulars, CGST, SGST, IGST and total. First gross GST payable, how much is the gross GST payable, CGST 20, 20. 20, 10, total 50, minus CGST credit utilized, CGST credit utilized, how much? 20 we will utilize first and then 2000 we utilize for IGST, so 20, 2000, minus SGST credit utilized. So, 20,000 for SGST and then 2,000 for IGST. So, 22,000. Now, this will be net GST payable. 0, 0 and 6000. So, finally, 6000. Is there any alternative answers? No. No alternative answers. This is the only answer. Because we do not have multiple options. That is only possible in case when we are using the IGST credit for payment of CGST, SGST. Next, look into illustration 3. Illustration 3. Compute net GST payable from the following data. CGST 20, SGST 20, then ITC 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. So, what is the process? First, which one we should use? This 10,000 we should use. That we can use for either CGST or SGST or both. Anything is okay. And therefore, there will be multiple answers in this. But the final net liability, total net liability will be how much? 20 plus 20, 40, 40 minus 30, 10,000 will be the answer. The 10,000 should be the answer. That is total of net liability should be 10,000. So, any way you can do that, okay. So, write down answer to illustration 3. Answer to illustration 3. CGST particulars. SGST. IGST. And total. Gross. GST payable. What is it? Gross GST payable. CGST. 20? 20,000. SGST 20,000. So, 40,000. Which credit we need to use first? IGST credit. IGST credit utilized. How much is the IGST credit utilized? 10,000, 10,000. Only 10,000 we have. But anyway we can do. It's up to you. But I am using 5,000 for CGST, 5,000 for SGST. But you can do anyway. Then next, which credit? 
CGST credit utilized. What is a CGST credit? 10,000. That, of course, I have to set off with CGST only and SGST credit utilized. Same, I have to set off with SGST only. So, finally, net GST payable. Five thousand CGST, five thousand SGST, IGST zero, and the total will be ten thousand. Okay. Suppose if you have used fully ten thousand for CGST, your answer will be ten thousand SGST. Correct. CGST zero here ten thousand zero and ten thousand like that it will be. So, alternative answers exist. Alternative answers exist, but the total of net GST payable is ten thousand. Done. Next. Answer to illustration 4. Illustration 4 have a look into compute net GST payable from the following data CGST, SGST, IGST. 5000, 5000 and 5000, GST paid on invert supply, 2000, 2000 and 10,000. Now you tell me, what will you do first? IGST credit, how much IGST credit? 10,000, you will use for payment of IGST 5000, still how much is left? 5000, what you will do with that 5000? You can use it for either CGST or SGST or both, correct? Huh? Correct? But, if you use 5000 fully for CGST, there is a mistake that you are doing. How? Say this. What should be the final answer? Total of net liability should be how much? 1000. How you know? 5 plus 5 plus 5. 15,000. And 2, 2 and 10. 14,000. So, 15,000 minus 14,000. 1000 should be the total answer. That is final answer. Correct. The total net GST should be 1000. But, if at all, you are using 10,000 for payment of 5,000 first. Thereafter, you will have 5,000 and if you are using it for CGST, then what will happen is that CGST will become 0. SGST will be 3,000. Why 3,000? 2,000 we can use. Why can't we use this 2,000 for 5,000 we cannot use? Because CGST credit can be set off with SGST liability and IGST will become 0 and this 2000 will be carried forward, you understood, clear or not? So, 2000 rupees we cannot set off with SGST, so it will be carried forward, it is like 3000 we pay and 2000 we carry forward, had we used the 2000, 1000 rupees would have been the liability, that is only correct answer, right? So, 3000 is not the correct answer, fine. So, then you tell me what should we do? Ah, so, not necessary equally, it can be 3000, 2000 or 2000, 3000, here also alternative is there, but anyway we can use, but ensure that, ensure that you are not spending more than 3000, why you are not spending more than 3000 for CGST or SGST, because already there is a credit of 2000, 2000 rupees due to that reason, understood now, but the best way is what, divide it equally. Why divide it equally? If you see there, ITC equala, liability equala. So, you divide the IGST credit equally so that you will get the correct answer. Done? 
So, write down answer to illustration 4. So, first particulars CGST, SGST, IGST and total gross GST payable CGST how much? 5000, SGST 5000, IGST 5000, so total 15000 minus which credit we need to use first? IGST credit utilized. How much is the IGST credit? 10,000. So, we are using 5000 first for IGST, then still we have 5000 that can be used for? To 2500 CGST and 2500 SGST. Okay, minus CGST credit utilized. How much CGST credit? 2000 and SGST credit utilized that is also 2000 so that the net GST payable net GST payable will be 500 500 0 and 1000 so this is the correct answer but alternative answers exist Alternative answers exist, but total of net GST payable is 1000. Okay. Now, sir, what about GST compensation says? Can we take GST compensation says as credit? Yes, we can take GST compensation says as credit, but that can be utilized only for payment of GST compensation says. We cannot use it for payment of IGST, etc. Means GST compensation says is completely separate. For example, I am a car dealer, I am buying a car. So, my manufacturer will charge me GST compensation says. Again, I am selling the car to you. When I am selling the car to you, I will charge GST compensation says from you. So, this GST compensation says which I have paid can only be set off. Which means, suppose if I do not have liability of GST compensation says, can I take the credit of GST compensation says? No, I cannot take credit. So, GST compensation says is completely separate. So, you just uh, make note of that information here. So, in this principle 1 itself, you write down GST compensation says can be utilized only for payment of GST compensation says. GST compensation says on invert supply, GST compensation says on invert supply can be utilized can be utilized only for payment of GST compensation says on outward supply, GST compensation says on inward supply can be utilized 
only for payment of GST compensations is on outward supply. Done. So, this is about the credit and we have some more case studies related to this that we will see in page uh, 18. Have a look into page number 18. So far we have seen the manner of utilization, uh, it is an extension to that, some small small case studies which contains both outward supply, inward supply, we need to analyze as to whether it is intra or inter and then we need to decide as to what is the liability, what is the credit and we do the manner of utilization. But in this, how to classify a transaction as intra or inter? We need to see the location of supplier and place of supply. What will be the general provisions for place of supply? Anyhow, place of supply chapter we will be starting later. But what is the general provisions relating to place of supply? So, you remember now at present, in case of goods, this is general provisions, okay, generally. In case of goods, ending point will be taken as the place of supply. In case of services, location of recipient will be taken as a place of supply. This is in the absence of specific provisions. But we have some specific provisions also. But generally, what will be taken as a place of supply? location of recipient in case of services and ending point of the goods in case of goods. Understood? So now, look into this first question. Basic case studies on computation of net GST payable. Braincom Private Limited, a manufacturer of laptops in Gujarat, manufactured and sold 1000 2-in-1 laptops flexi for the month of August 2021 to their distributor measures Jain computers in Tamil Nadu at rupees 30,000 each. Applicable rate of GST on laptops is 28% during the month following invert supplies are registered in the books. Raw material A purchased from a dealer in Tamil Nadu 5 lakhs. First paragraph you read and what is our outward supply? Intrastata, interstata. What is the location of supplier? Supplier is who? Braincom computers. Where is supplier located? Gujarat. And what is the ending point of the goods? For goods, we should see ending point. Correct? Huh? So, what is the ending point of the goods? Tamil Nadu. So, location of supplier Gujarat and place of supply Tamil Nadu. What is the nature of supply? Interstate. So, chargeable to IGST. Okay. So, we have IGST liability. Understood? Huh? Then, so please update that in the table below. There is a table below, you just update, cross GST payable on outward supply. So, which column you need to update? CGST, SGST or IGST? IGST. How many laptops? How many laptops sold? 1000. What is the price of each laptop? Huh? 30,000. What is the rate of GST on laptop? 28%. So, right there, right there, 1000 into 1000 into 30,000 into 28 percent. You understood now? 1000 laptops, 30,000 each, 28 percent. Like this, all workings you should show in the answer sheet. All working should form part of answer. Means, whatever you do in calculator, that should be written in the answer sheet. Then only you will get full marks. Okay. Otherwise, unnecessarily for that also they will lose. Like what some students will do, they calculate 1000 into 30,000 into 28 percent. Final one number will come, na? that alone they will update. No, you have to write fully the explanation. So, how much 1000 into 30,000 into 28 percent? 84 lakhs is the IGST liability. Then, come back to the question. Following invert supplies are registered in the books. Raw material A purchased from a dealer in Tamil Nadu, 5 lakhs, GST rate 18 percent. Now, who is the supplier? Ah, Tamil Nadu, dealer in Tamil Nadu. And what is the ending point? Goods, na? for goods we should say ending point. What is the ending point? Gujarat. So, it is interstate purchase or intrastate purchase? Interstate. You are recipient, pa, brain come. 
always see from whose perspective you are doing the computation. From whose perspective you are doing computation? Brain come. So your brain come. Where are you located? Gujarat. From where you are purchasing? Tamil Nadu. Means it is interstate purchase for you. Interstate purchase means IGST credit. So therefore, in which column we need to update? IGST column. So raw material A. How much is the raw material A? 5 lakhs into 18 percent. 5 lakhs into 18 percent. How much is 5 lakhs into 18 percent? 90,000. Then next one. Raw material B. Purchased from a dealer in Gujarat. 8 lakhs. GST rate 28 percent. So where Braincom is located? Gujarat. And from where they are purchasing? Within the state Gujarat. So it is intra or inter? Intra, within the state, intra. So therefore, what liability will be there? CGST and SGST. How much is the rate of GST given in the question? 28. 28 is total. Then how much will be CGST? 14% CGST and 14% SGST. Are you with me? So therefore, raw material B. How much is the value of raw material B? 8 lakhs. Raw material B is 8 lakhs. So, 8 lakhs into 14 percent and 8 lakhs into 14 percent. How much that comes to? 1 lakh 12,000 and 1 lakh 12,000. Then next, input service C received from a service provider in Gujarat 2 lakhs, GST rate 18 percent. So, Braincom is in Gujarat. From where the services are received? Gujarat. So, it is intra, correct? So, again CGST, SGST. But what is the rate given there? 18. So, divide into 2, 9 percent and 9 percent. So, CGST, what is the value? 2 lakhs. So, 2 lakhs into 9 percent and 2 lakhs into 9 percent that is 18,000 and 18,000. Then input service D, input service D, how much input service D, received from a service provider in Maharashtra 4 lakhs, GST rate 12 percent. Now is it within the state or from other state? Braincom is in Gujarat, but they are receiving from a person in Maharashtra. So therefore it is interstate, so IGST column, 4 lakhs into 12 percent, 4 lakhs into 12 percent 48,000. Then continue to the question, compute net GST payable, that is what we are going to do. Considering the fact that balance in electronic credit ledger is 1,30,000, what does it mean? Ah, input tax, opening balance, opening balance means last month we would not have utilized it some excess balance is there, so that is carried forward. So, what is the opening balance of credit? 130. In which column? IGST column. Okay, 130,000 of IGST. So, therefore, in IGST column, we need to take opening balance 130,000. Now, what is the total of ITC? ITC total you see. CGST 1 lakh 12 plus 18, 1 lakh 30. Yeah. Then SGST 1 lakh 30. IGST you would see the total. What is the total of IGST? 1 lakh 30 plus 90 plus 48. 2 lakh 68,000. Now, if you see, we have only IGST liability, correct? All the credits are there. First, which credit we need to use? IGST. Second, CGST. And then third, SGST. So, fourth principle we discussed now based on that. So, first cross GST payable will be 84 lakhs minus IGST credit utilized 2 lakh 68,000 minus SGST credit, CGST credit 1 lakh 30 minus SGST credit 1 lakh 30. So, the net GST payable 84 lakhs minus 2 lakh 68 minus 1 lakh 30, 1 lakh 30. How much? 
78 lakh 72 thousand is the net GST payable. Okay. Now, listen, there is a concept of IGST settlement. Okay. I am just explaining you that. You finish now making note of this. Yes. IGST settlement. What happens is that my purchases, my invert supply is intrastate. My invert supply is intra. Means what is the credit that I will have? CGST credit and SGST credit. CGST credit and SGST credit means while making purchase, I would have paid CGST, SGST. That CGST would have gone to which government? Okay. Then this SGST would have gone to which government? State government. You got it? My outward supply is inter. My outward supply is inter. Then what is my liability? IGST payable. Payable to whom? Which government? Central government. Okay. Yeah. Now say I have a CGST credit of 10,000 and SGST credit of 10,000 and IGST payable of 25,000. I am using this 10,000 and this 10,000 for payment of 25,000. Am I right? Now, this 10,000 is with which government? This 25,000 is payable to which government? So, is there any settlement required? No, set off, correct? One person is not required to pay to the other person because both are same. Sir, same person is my debtor, same person is my creditor. Will there be any settlement required? No. We can do the set off, correct? But the second 10,000 is with which government? This 25,000 we are required to pay to which government? So now, when state government credit you are setting off with central government, state government should transfer that money to the central government. Simple pass, state government is my debtor. Central government is my creditor. I am telling to my creditor, the debtor will pay. I came out of the transaction. But the debtor has to pay, na? No, understood. So, state government has to pay 10,000 to central government under IGST settlement. Is it clear? So, state government should transfer, should transfer 10,000 to central government under IGST settlement, under IGST settlement, state government should transfer 10,000 to central government. Is it clear? Understood? Then, another scenario. This is scenario 1, situation 1. Okay. Now, situation 2. So, before that, you just write down this in your notebook, IGST settlement, IGST settlement. So, this settlement is between whom? CG and SG, CG and SG between central government and state governments.
okay then another situation we will see another situation is reverse my inward supply is inter my outward supply is intra okay situation 2 So I have an inward supply and that inward supply is inter and I have an outward supply and that outward supply is intra. Now when my inward supply is inter, what is the credit that I have? IGST credit this IGST credit means I have paid to whom? Central government. Then say that is some 15,000. Then intra means what is the liability? CGST payable and SGST payable. So the CGST payable to which government? Central government, SGST payable to which government? State government. Now, I am using out of this 15,000, 10,000 for payment of CGST and 5,000 for payment of SGST. Now, listen carefully. I can use now IGST credit, I can use for CGST as well as SGST. Now, this 15,000 is with which government? Central government. Now, out of this 15, 10,000 I am using for payment to central government only so there is no settlement however when i am using 5000 for payment of sgst so that 5000 is with which government central government and to whom i need to pay state government when i do the set off central government should transfer that 5000 rupees to state government in the previous case sg transferred now in this case cg cg should transfer CG should transfer how much? 5000 to SG under IGST settlement. Under IGST settlement, central government should transfer 5000 rupees to state government. Understood? So, tell me in which case which government will transfer only two cases IGST credit for SGST liability SGST credit for IGST liability you tell me which government will transfer first IGST credit for SGST liability center to state super SGST credit with IGST liability state government to center clear understood reason which credit we are adjusting that government is going to pay to the other government IGST credit when you adjust with SGST IGST is with central government also central government has to pay that to state government when you use SGST credit for payment of IGST liability state government has to pay that to central government so now in this case in this question question number one we discussed now so far in this question IGST credit are we utilizing no we are utilizing SGST credit for IGST liability. Correct? Huh? Go back to that question. Go back to that question. Are we utilizing SGST credit for payment of IGST liability? Yes. As we are utilizing SGST credit because 130,000 SGST credit, 130 CGST we utilize, but there is no settlement because IGST payable also central government, CGST credit also central government. So, no problem with IGST settlement. But SGST credit of 130, we are setting off against IGST liability, which means that state government should transfer 130 to central government under IGST settlement. So that's what we need to write in the exam as a note. So in exam, after completing this, you need to write two notes. Note number one related to utilization. What is it? Utilization. Uh, CGST credit can be utilized for payment of IGST liability. But fourth principle, what is that? As we have multiple credits on IGST liability, first IGST credit should be utilized and thereafter CGST credit and thereafter SGST credit. Second note, as SGST credit is utilized for payment of IGST liability, state government should transfer that to central government under IGST settlement. Please go through the notes. 
I have already given that, typed and given, you read it once. As per section 49, for payment of IGST liability, first IGST credit should be utilized and then a CGST credit and thereafter SGST credit. As SGST credit is utilized for payment of IGST liability, state government of Gujarat shall pay 1 lakh 30, how much we utilize? 1 lakh 30 to central government under IGST settlement. Okay, understood here everyone? Now, second question you see. Second question I will just read. You need to try this. That is a homework for you. Okay. So, see the second question. Go Noise LLP, an importer of smart watches located in Indore, Madhya Pradesh, has imported 10,000 smart watches from China and the sales made during various dates in April 2021 is as follows. So, they have given three transactions depending upon the location of supplier and the ending point, you decide whether it is intrastate or interstate and you arrive at the respective columns that you try. Then the applicable rate of GST on smartwatch is 28 percent. If it is intra, you take 14, 14. If it is inter, you take 28. The customs duty paid on import of the above consignment is as follows. Basic customs duty 30 lakhs and IGST on import 9 to lakh 40. Basic customs duty you cannot take as credit, but IGST you can take as credit. Customs duty we cannot take as credit na. Right now we are talking about GST. In GST why customs duty can be taken as credit? Only IGST can be taken as credit. SWS means social welfare structure that also cannot be taken as credit. Only this IGST on import can only be taken as credit. Also they have received some services from a service provider in Madhya Pradesh for a value of 25 lakhs GST 18 percent. So they are receiving some input services on that also they can take ITC. Now, based on this ITC and liability, you need to compute the net GST payable. Already I gave you the template, you try in that, okay. Then another question, question number 3 you see. Question number 3, Grant and Company Chartered Accountants having registered office in Chennai, Tamil Nadu rendered services to the tune of 40 lakhs during the month of September 2021. Out of the total value of supply of services during the month, 25 lakhs is interstate supplies and the balance is intrastate supplies. So, 25 lakhs is interstate, 15 lakhs is intra. So, we have both CGST, SGST and IGST liabilities. The invoice supply of services during the month is as follows. Rent to property owner in Chennai, Tamil Nadu, CGST paid, SGST paid, 45-45. Software usage charges for supplier of service in Mumbai 36,000. But hotel accommodation in Delhi 9,000 CGST and 9,000 Delhi SGST. Now, where is this grant and co registered? Tamil Nadu. But when they go to hotel in Delhi, I told you, in case of service in relation to immobile property, the location of immobile property is a place of supply. Now, usually chartered accountants and all will go to outstation audit. So, they go to outstation audit in Delhi. When they go to outstation audit in Delhi, they stay in accommodation there. Now, who is the supplier? Hotel is the supplier and the CA is the recipient. But the place of supply is the location of hotel. Where the hotel is located? Delhi. Supplier also Delhi, place of supply also Delhi. So, usually they raise a CGST and Delhi GST invoice. But the question here is, can the chartered accountant who is in Tamil Nadu take the ITC? No. So, CGST, SGST paid in a state where you are not registered cannot be taken as credit. So, where the CA office is registered? Tamil Nadu. So, as they are registered in Tamil Nadu, they can take only Tamil Nadu SGST as credit. Are you understanding? Delhi SGST cannot be taken as credit. Sir, CGST, yes. CGST also they cannot take as credit. Why, sir? <coughs> because <coughs> that CGST and SGST is not paid in the state where they are registered, where they are registered Tamil Nadu. So, it is paid in the other state that cannot be taken as credit. So, law disallows that, you understood. So, even though this 9000 and 9000 they have paid, but they cannot take ITC with respect to that. 
both sir yes both 9000 and 9000 monthly tax online portal subscription yes they can remaining and all they can take credit the problem is only with respect to remember cgst sgst paid in a state where the person is not registered cannot be availed as itc you just write down that information here cgst and sgst paid in a state where the person is not registered, where the person is not registered, CGST and SGST paid in a state where the person is not registered cannot be availed as ITC cannot be availed as ITC. CGST and SGST paid in a state where the person is not registered cannot be availed as ITC. So, that is gone. Okay. Remaining and all they can take. Compute net GST payable by Grant & Co. considering GST rate applicable to chart accountants as 18 percent. Also, what will be your answer if Grant & Co. is having only intrastate supply of service of 40 lakhs? and there is no interstate supplies during the month. So, that is another computation. If they have only intrastate. So, I have given two templates. You need to fill this. Okay. So, you complete this. You take this for homework. These two questions. Question number uh, 2 and question number 3. You can try now. Yes. So, in our next class, we can discuss the answers for this and proceed to the remaining portion. So, next class hardly some one hour is required, we can complete the first chapter and we can move on to the second chapter, okay. And uh, our next class is on Monday. So, this Saturday, Sunday, we do not have class, Monday. So, that is why you try this and we will have the class on Monday. And before that, just I need two minutes of your time. There are some students who are also, you know, preparing for uh, CMA, CMA Intermediate. So, for CMA intermediate, the portion is more or less the same, but we have some extra topics. So, introduction to GST, till this uh, GST practitioner, not, not GST practitioner, introduction to GST till eWable. This is therefore CMA intermediate also, same portion. Okay, but these topics are not there and I have given some CMA intermediate extra topics. So, these are the extra topics for CMA intermediate students. So, this if you are preparing for CMA intermediate also, okay, the same portion or the same lectures is applicable and I will be taking these extra topics for those who are doing only CMA inter, but it will be at the end. It will be at the end because they have customs also. So, they have this taxable event under customs, exemptions under customs. So, they have customs portion also and GST also little bit extra portion they have due to that reason. So, this batch will go. I will first complete the CA intermediate portion. Thereafter, I will be taking the CMA intermediate portion for those who are appearing for CMA intermediate, if you are not doing that is not re relevant for you and uh, up to this plus that extra topics that is the CMA inter portion for your information. Okay. And if you are doing CMA inter, you can check our uh, staff, they will be giving you this extra booklet. That extra booklet contains the extra topics for CMA. Okay. If you are doing only CA, then whatever book that has been provided to you already that will be sufficient. Done. Thank you. We will meet on the next class. Thank you. Take care. And please do those two questions as homework. Okay.